Hey! Hi everybody, my name is Tim, it's great to be here. Please forgive the chair, it won't leave me alone. You'll see behind me a couple of masks and those masks are what I'm here to talk about today. Um, comedy doesn't get any respect. I'm a comedian of sorts. I write a lot of comedy, I read a lot of comedy, but it gets no respect. Comedy uh, has never won the Man Booker Prize. A comedy book has never won the Miles Franklin Literary Award. A comedy has never ever once won an AFI Award, which is the Australian Film Institute of well, nobody knows who, middle class over serious people with rectangle spectacles award. <laughs> comedy has never won any of these things. Comedy is not represented in any of the tertiary screenwriting or creative writing courses in Australia outside of one place and that's RMIT, RMIT University in, in uh, Melbourne. Nowhere, Sydney Uni, they'd never heard of it until I called them up a couple of weeks ago. Come on in, they said, he must know something. Um, everybody, anywhere I go around the country, Adelaide University, Edith Cowan University in WA, Brisbane University, uh, Tasmania's universities, it's got more than one. I was surprised to even hear it was an actual place. <laughs> so nowhere in our tertiary institutions or any of our TAFEs or even our private institutions like the Holmes Glen people have comedy for more than well, as long as I can turn up to teach it. I am, apart from a guy called Rastus, who has taken over for me in Melbourne, Australia's only teacher of narrative comedy. This is errant madness. Why would you put me in charge of anything? <laughs> the simple fact is, you know, narrative comedy is comedy with stories. So I don't teach stand-up comedy. I don't teach how to write one-liners and that kind of thing. I throw that in for good measure. I teach how to write a comedy film or how to write a sitcom or how to write a comic play or how to write a, a satire or comedy novel. Um, the fact that there's only me is not your fault. It's not because you are all stupid. And it's not because every academic and every academic institution in this country is full of utter gutter morons. The fact is, this is a Western culture-wide problem. Western culture does not respect comedy. It doesn't think it, it should win an award. A comedy has only ever won one Best Film Oscar. And that, of course, was written by Woody Allen, who is one of the most depressed people you will ever meet in your life. <laughs> So what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, what happened. What happened was, once upon a time, we had the ancient Greeks, and they were around in a country called ancient Greece, <laughs> which must have sunk into the ocean or something, because all of a sudden, everybody seemed to have forgotten what the ancient Greeks had told us. The ancient Greeks had a whole bunch of gods, and the ancient Greeks prioritised comedy. They thought it was very important. It was an important way for people to communicate, it was an important way for people to deal with the dark and scary things like grief and war and famine and violence and hatred. Comedy was the best way to deal with them and to neutralize them. And the Greeks had gods. The Greeks had all sorts of gods. The Greeks had god gods and goddesses coming out of their ancient ears, which is why there was so much hair coming out of them. They had Hermes, which was the god of speed, yeah, not that kind. We meant the running. Yeah, off he goes. There you go. Then we had, uh, who else was there? Oh, yes, Epimetheus was one of them. Nobody ever knows much about Epimetheus because he was the god of forgetfulness and, and half good excuses. So if you were in trouble, you'd go, oh, Epimetheus, give me an excuse. So you could go home and say, honey, I fell into the wine. And that was Epimetheus who would help you out. And of course they had Dionysus. Dionysus was a short, fat guy with a beard, held a big bottle of wine, who went round the place asking people where the orgy was. Where's the orgy? Where's the orgy? Except he did it in ancient Greek, so people thought it was, oh, it's very, very smart, very, very intelligent. But off he went, and he was a figure of ridicule. 
But not only that, sisters, I'm very disappointed in all of you, sisters. As a trained school that walls feminist, I'm appalled at the way Western women have allowed the goddesses to be wiped out. In one instant, in one book, the Greek goddesses were crushed and thrown out the window. Now, the goddesses were great in ancient Greece. There was Artemis. Artemis had a bow and an arrow. She was uh, great at hunting. She had a knife. She fought with bears. There was, of course, you know, Aphrodite, who was, <laughs> hello, yeah, hi, hi, I'm Aphrodite. Yeah, yeah, put these on. But she was a great goddess to have around. And, of course, there was a, a goddess called Athena. And Athena was the goddess for brains. There was no male equivalent. There was no male god who was in charge of intelligence. And sisters, you all let it go. And there is no, there is no one fighting in Western society to bring back Athena. Nobody. But the best thing of all, that's, a, that's a, you know, an issue I can't fix, sisters, is up to you, but I will join the fight. There is nobody who will recognize that these gods used to laugh at each other and they used to laugh at us. And we used to laugh at Dionysus, for God's sake. The guy was like, find, you know, find a room, an orgy will be provided, Dionysus. We could laugh at them and they could laugh at us because those gods and goddesses understood that comedy was important. Then a bunch of guys with long beards and really bad caftans got together. And they all decided that we did not need these gods and certainly not goddesses. And just to make sure there was no confusion, they talked about God as a hymn and they spelt it with a capital H, just so there was no doubt. So God is not described as S slash H E, it's just he, it's a hymn. And it's an old guy, he votes conservative, he's standing right next to Tony Abbott, having a great old time. God, oh, I'm. I'm with him no matter what happens. Now this God called Jehovah, which is hardly a groovy name, but it's the kind of name, it's a J name, like people would call Jaden, Jordan, Jehovah, come inside. He had no sense of humor. There is no joke in the Bible. Anywhere in the Bible, you can read it. Abraham's wife, one of his wives, did laugh. And it's mentioned that she laughed. In an unrelated incident, she was stoned to death. Which shows you, you know, exactly where God, Jehovah, was prioritizing laughter. There are no jokes. There's no moment when Jesus dries his eyes and goes, oh, oh, anyway, let me tell you another story. It doesn't happen. Jesus, for somehow, was on the mount giving a speech, maintaining the attention of hundreds of people without one joke. This is public speaking beyond the skill of anyone who has lived before or since. I put it to you that Jesus was a good public speaker because occasionally he'd drop in a little joke. Just here or there, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth and my sandals. Oh, he's hilarious. Well, they are meek after all. So, but that aside, what happened was tragedy and drama were placed up on the top shelf of Western culture. And, well, comedy was left behind. This wasn't helped because Aristotle's book on comedy was lost or burnt or stood upon by young liberals. <laughs> so it was lost as far as being a pillar of, a, of our Western culture goes. All we had left was his book Poetics, which describes tragedy in detail and, of course, you know, adventure stories in detail. But comedy was not prioritized in any way. So we end up with a society that believes a tragic story is higher. It is a higher art form. It is more noble, it is more pious, it is more respectful than a comic story. This is bull twang. Because we know ourselves that comedy is what we want. If you're sending someone a little phone tweet you know, a link to something. Do you send them the last 45 seconds of Titanic? Oh, here's the last bit of Titanic when the boat is sinking and Jack's about to drown. Click, happy day. No, 
do you send them, you know, here's 45 seconds of an Australian suicide smack movie. Uh, just thought, you know, FYI, no. We send, using our machine, 60 seconds of giggle. Funny or die, or, or uh, girls uninterrupted. So, we know uh, 17 of the, of the top 20 Australian box office hits of all time are comedies. Muriel's Wedding, Priscilla, Crocodile Dundee is still Australia's number one. Kenny, The Castle, the list goes on. And who knows what the other ones are? I can see people thinking, oh, what if we do the one? Nobody cares what the other ones are. Because the comedies are the things we remember fondly. The others are just the things we respect and say, oh, by George, very important, very important issue. So the audience wants comedy. It does not want to be depressed. Australian dramatic films, uh, they call themselves dramas, don't play. Nobody goes to see them. Nobody wants them. You won't find them at any of the big cinema chains, Hoyts and Event and Reading. They just won't play them because nobody wants to see them because the Australian classic drama film breaks a very simple rule that Aristotle pointed out. It was only two and a half thousand years ago. I can understand why it's taken a while for Australian screenwriters to work it out. And he said that a comedy that doesn't bear serious examination is false wit. Which means, you know, a comedy has to be about something important, otherwise what do we care? But he also said that a tragedy that doesn't bear any levity, no laughter at all, is suspicious and it's preaching. And nobody's going to fork out 20 bucks or give an hour of their time for some writer to give them a lecture? Would you stop a writer in a street and say, hey, can you just tell me about something and, and make sure you don't give me any jokes? The fact is, writers don't know, most of them. But what they ignore is, well, what they haven't been told. And what they haven't been told is that picture of the two masks behind me is not made up. Someone didn't just pull it out of their ear one day and say, I like the way, that's funny, that's interesting. Mm. That has been around since 600 BC as a symbol of drama. If you went to see a dramatic play, this would be hanging on the door of the amphitheatre, not that they have doors. You'll have to, you know, go with me here. One mask is laughing and one mask is crying and the two have to work together. Aristotle was right. The comedy has to incorporate the crying and the tragedy, and tragedies have to incorporate the laughter. Because a tragedy that also has laughs, that makes us smile, takes us on an emotional journey. As soon as we're smiling or laughing at or with a character, we're caring about them. And we are susceptible to surprise and susceptible to tears. Of course, as you can see, the flip side of laughing is tears. This is not taught in Australia. This is not taught in America and it's not taught in Britain. There's a handful, a small handful in Britain of people like me who explain how comedy works. And the same thing in the States. Not many of us. Because Western society started in ancient Greece. And you're thinking, are there principles? Oh, come on. I'm all, all often told, you know, there's no principle to comedy. There's no, there's no rules. You know, you're either funny or you're not. Please never say this again because it makes you look like an idiot. The simple fact is, of course it's got principles. How about this one? The punchline goes at the end. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, but apart from that, yes, apart from that, we have all sorts of principles. There are comic negations, comic reversals. Paraprodoskians, look that word up, it's great and it's not a body part. Uh, there are self-referential jokes, uh, distortions. The way comedy works in terms of story was outlined by Aristotle. It's really very simple, there are only two differences. These differences have eluded 
the teachers of creative writing and the teachers of screenwriting in this country, right across the society, who all think that, you know, people who do funny for a living just, I don't know, are just naturally funny. Well, have you spent five minutes with a comedian? It's not a pleasant time. <laughs> do you want to spend time with a, you know, a depressive hypochondriac? Hi. <laughs> so, there are principles. Uh, a hero with a goal in comedy is not a hero. They have a goal, but usually it's a grain of sand. Usually it's a, you know, a, bowl, of, a bowl of dust that they think is important. They don't have the skills or the tools or the contacts to help them get that goal, but they maintain hope. They maintain enduring hope. And that is, as Aristotle said, a comic story. Duh, is this too hard for our screenwriting institutions to get their heads around? Is that too much information for you know, Adelaide University to pass on to its students. Instead, all the students get is the crying mask, which is why most of the feature scripts that I'm forced to read involve smack, suicide, domestic violence, horror, torpor, and a lot of staring into space. <laughs> and that's it. And if you've been to see an Australian dramatic film, that's what you've seen. You've gone to the local art cinema, which is the only place that will tolerate it, and that's what you've seen. So there are principles that work in all films, and they all, they all work to deliver truth. Drama is built to draw us in, to make us believe that it's real. Because when we believe it's real, we can start to learn mimetically from the, ca from the characters. Uh, Mimetically is from mimesis, the ancient Greek word, which is to learn through imitation. So we learn, God help us, watching Russell Crowe imitate a gladiator, what it's like to be a gladiator. Comedy doesn't have time for that. Comedy is about truth and only truth, which is why we can do it with glove puppets. It's why we can uh, do comedy with Woody and Buzz Lightyear. Realism has nothing to do with it. Comedy is designed to make us laugh involuntarily and spontaneously and hopefully deliver some truth in the meantime. Now I may sound a bit angry, a bit grumpy, a bit peeved and the reason is simple because you, if you are paying for a screenwriting course in this country, are being ripped off blind. You've been given half the story and for years you've been ripped off which is why most of the films that are being produced and most of the short films that are being produced are suicidal smack drama misery porn. They are not writing. It is bad writing to not have the two masks working together. So get it together. And as far as delivery of truth goes, comedy is the highest of all the writing forms and it's the lowest because we have fart jokes. So next time someone says to you that drama and tragedy are higher writing crafts, just say to them, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Thank you.